Okay, so Sunil, so this is gonna be some review for you, but. Okay, so we get to have um, the awesome thing when you go to Super Saturdays is when they bring in really awesome, either um, people from corporate. So we did have Michael Neen in there. Um, and for those of you who don't know him, he is the vice president. He's in charge of like all of um, like the compensation plan. If you've ever been to any event or you've seen any of the videos, he's usually dressed up in like a Shakeology bottle. Um, at Summit last year, he did was part of this whole puppet thing. He is like the funniest guy out of, I mean, Carl is amazing and Jeff Hill is funny, but like Michael is probably the funniest guy um, and he has no problem cracking fun at himself, which makes him funnier. So anyway, so he was there. It's his second time being at our DC area. Um, in our DC area, we have some very, we have some 10 and eight star coaches that lead us. So they have connections. And so they always actually bring in some really good um, top leaders in our company. And so anyway, we had the opportunity to hear from the number 10 coach in the company right now. Um, and then the number eight coach, I mean the number seven coach who made it last year. And so she is going on the um, top 10 trip this year. Um, and so I really liked both of them, but I really liked the second girl. And, um, afterwards, some of you want to chime in later, you can give it your points on the two of them. So I just tried to compile my notes from them. So I want to just go over that. And then I want to make sure that everybody's aware of all these new launches and new exciting things coming down, um, for the rest of 2017, that's going to really help you guys build momentum with your business. So the first coach really, and both of them really did hone in on this idea of, bringing vision to life in your coaching business. And so you have to decide, like I know what my vision is for my business and what I really want to achieve in this business, but every coach on our team is going to have different ones. And I also want to make sure that coaches know that just because you're successful in your coaching business, if you love your day job, it doesn't mean you have to leave your day job. There's a lot of coaches who are making six plus figures in their corporate job and six plus figures in their coaching job. And they love both and they manage both. Um, and actually, if you have ever heard of Christina Delgado, or if you follow her at all, uh, but she's part of, uh, co-founder of Diesel Nation in Miami. Um, she's a millionaire's club. She was a huge um, uh, lawyer, at this big law firm in, in uh, Miami. And she made a hell of a lot of money being a lawyer with this huge law firm and she loved what she did. And it wasn't until her sister, who's her co-founder of Team Diesel Nation, um, ended up quitting her job. And she saw that her, her nieces and nephews, like her, her sister was able to now bring them to school, to go on field trips, to be around for them, like all the time. Whereas she was this lawyer and it wasn't, she couldn't volunteer on field trips. She wasn't able to drop her kids off in the morning. Um, she wasn't able to be home when they came home from school because of the intensity of her job. And so it just got to a point where she was like, I did, I lived my corporate career for a while. I did it. And now I'm ready to be that mom and I can still bring in and I can still provide for my family with this successful coaching business. And she finally ended up leaving um, her corporate job. But there's a lot of top coaches even a top, the number one coach two years in a row, um, oh my gosh, I love him, and his name is slipping my mind. He's like an orthodontist, and he has um, like eight kids or something. And um, anyway, he was the top two coach twice while still owning his own business, his own practice, uh, you know, so it is doable. So I don't, I think coaches sometimes don't want to put time into their coaching business because they're like, eh. I don't really want to work it because I love what I do or my job is really not that bad. So it's not worth working my coaching business, but it's always worth working your coaching business because who couldn't use a couple extra hundred bucks if that's the most you do with it um, and helping other people. So anyway, this coach, the first coach um, really talked about bringing vision to life through your coaching business. And it's really hard to know where you want to go or where you're going if you don't know where you want to go. And that's why I talked to you guys in the beginning of January. I gave you the um, template. I was in Lindsay Matley's free group all about your vision board. What did the things that I wanted to achieve this year, some to do with coaching, some to do with just my life, um, putting them together on a vision board for 2017. And so the same thing happens for your coaching business. Like 
What do you actually want? Is your goal to make $100 a week? Is your goal to make $1,000 a month? Is your goal to make $1,000 a week? What is the ultimate goal with coaching? Um, and both coaches really honed in, which I loved, because um, I've been in this coaching business long enough to know, your reason for being a coach cannot be, I just want to help people. Because when push comes to shove, you've got a really long day at work, and if you have kids and you've got kid activities, and when you get home, the if your only motivation is, I just want to help people, there's nothing motivating you to pull out your to-do list, to message people, to invite people, to get over those fears, to send out those friend requests, to sit there and to read the personal development, although you might just listen to that anyway because it helps you with your regular life. But there's nothing really pushing you. Um, so really having a vision for what you want, right? And so for me, this is all part of Shannon. If you see this picture, this is part of like Shannon's downline, right? Obviously, Team Powerhouse is way larger than just this photo of us at Summit. And even some of us who were there at Summit this year, two years ago, aren't in this photo. But it's just crazy to see from our very first Summit that I went with Shannon. It was her very first Summit. She didn't go to any of the ones prior. There was like eight of us. And each year, more and more and more of Team Powerhouse is coming. And I've seen other coaches. And now when I look at, like, when Lindsay Matway takes her coaching photo, it's, like, this huge, you know, downline of the bombshell network, et cetera. Like, I think that's amazing, right? I think that would be the coolest thing is to have more and more people on our team and going to these events and stuff. So this is part of my vision. So my number one thing for you guys is to figure, figure out, what if this is your business, you become a CEO the second you become a coach, what is your vision for coaching? And I would love to know those things because I need to know, am I wanting to push you? Am I wanting to help you with those goals? Be like, hey, you said this was your goal, but I'm not seeing this. Or be like, dude, I don't want to be in a training because that's not part of my, my goal at all, right? I just want to be a part of the community. I don't really want to work it at all. And that's what I do have when, when, I, when I have different, I hate the word discount, but when I have them that are specifically like, I just want to save on Shakeology and be in your group, don't put me in a training. I know that's their goal, you know, and some actually come around later on. That was their original goal. And then they're like, now I want to see about this coaching thing. Okay. So these were her, some of her tips. Um, and then those of you who have a downline, you can share this with them if they're not seeing this. So the number one thing is you must get scared, right, of your goals. So your goal has to scare you enough, um, and it's going to drive that fear, but that means that it's big enough. Like if your goal is just like, uh, eh, let me add like five friends this month, that's not really a scary goal. But if your goal is scary enough, like I know we hate, right, we hate to send those messages and invite people. That's like the number one thing that coaches hate to do. It's the scariest thing to do. And the most scary one is to invite them to the coaching opportunity. But for me, I'm like, I'm, I've gotten to that point where I'm like, I love this coaching opportunity. So it's a little less scary, but it's still scary to message people about it. Um, strive to inspire people every single day. The number one thing that these po both two girls talked about was like, you cannot have a hidden agenda. You should really be about the people first. I have two ladies who both wanted to join my current challenge group that's just about the um, the shape up, spring shape up group. Both of them have these crazy family things happening. Husbands lost jobs, children are needing to go on rehab, these different issues that are happening. And I just check in with them every single day, not about joining my group, not about it's the last day to join my group, et cetera, et cetera. It's not the right time. I can't imagine what some of these moms are dealing with at the moment. I'm just like, how are you doing today? How is today? How did that meeting go with your daughter? How did this go? It has to be about people first. They have to know that you care first about them. And then it's not just making that sale. It's not just some hidden agenda to hit some, you know, hit those numbers for success club. Would it be nice? Sure. It would be nice to hit those success club, but not if that's how I came across, right? I want to make sure that people know that I legit care about you first but I also want to then help you once you get through this, I want to help you with your health and fitness. So it has to be sharing from the heart. Um, it has to be striving to inspire daily. I really try to focus. I mean, obviously some posts like today, I just wanted to get some traction on my page. So I, Ryan fell asleep while we were watching Shocker, fell asleep while we were watching something. And I'm like, how many other women have this? And then all these other women were like, I'm the one that falls asleep. 
that wasn't one that I like well thought out. But there are other ones. Like my dad was talking to me tonight. And he's like, oh, your mom shared with me because people at my mom's, the church I grew up with, follow me. And this woman was like, oh, your daughter, I love it. She's, she talked, you know, and I talked about, I'm no bullshit. Because I had just shared um, a photo from when I was home trying on wedding dresses and that I woke up Monday morning a little bit bloated. And then two days later, I'm like back to routine, feeling leaner and back to myself. And I get messages from people, people who follow me. Sometimes it's people who are actually friends on Facebook with me. Other times it's just people who follow me. And it was like, your photos are offensive and you're always so happy and positive and that's offensive to people. And, um, and your photo that you shared, I think is offensive to a lot of people. And I don't have time personally. I've gotten to the point where I just don't have time to deal with people's bullshit. <laughs> and I call and I say it like it is. And that's totally the Ina side of me. Uh, I get it from my grandma. My dad always says, I knew that the second my mother was gone, she would never be fully gone. And I am here. Um, and so I just shared, and I know that emojis attract people. People don't want to read paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, but they sat there. And I know I had like 50 freaking emojis and I had one for all these different things. And I'm like, if you don't connect with me on at least one of these things, there's a super easy way to unfollow me and unfriend me. And it's okay because you're not, that person is not worth my time. I don't want that negativity. I clearly, we wouldn't be friends on the street. So therefore I don't need to be friends with you on Facebook. So be who you are sharing from your heart. And then they both talked about pushing through that fear. Um, and so one girl talked about, she was so nervous for her first post that she posted it and then she ran which we always tell you don't post and run like because people are going to comment on your post and you want to interact with them, you know, within those 20 minutes that you posted it. But I did that same thing two and a half. I think it's probably two and a half years ago. Now was the very first, very first time that I talked about my anorexia for the very first time. I couldn't even talk about it even with friends, like for some friends who never even knew that I went through that. And that happened 10 plus years ago. But I got to this point where I'm like, okay, it's a part of my story. I know it's going to help somebody as scary as it is. I'm going to do it. So I crafted this whole post the whole night before I even created a blog post to go with it. And I got ready that morning and I didn't even tell Ryan I was going to post about it. And I, I was sweating bullets and I was shaking and I hit post and I legit closed my laptop, went downstairs and did my workout. I couldn't, I turned my phone off. I didn't want to know. I didn't know what the repercussions were going to be. I didn't know how people were going to react to it. And I was just overwhelmed with love and support. But then my messages blew up with people who are currently suffering. Previously also suffered. They're like, oh my gosh, it's so nice to know somebody else who used to suffer as well. And I got a ton of people who their family members are suffering. And they're like, you just gave me hope because my niece has been suffering for several years. My daughter has been suffering, my sister, my best friend, this person, that person. You just gave me hope that there is hope for them to overcome this. Um, and so every time I post about it, it gets a little bit easier to talk about. But every time I post, it's clearly from the heart. It's like, I'm not making this crap up. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But it's fearful, right? It's super vulnerable of me. It's a hidden, it's a part of me that I never would have talked about. I was so embarrassed about. But... I shared about it, right? And so you have to push past those different fears. Same thing when it comes to just sending those friend requests or it comes to just messaging people and saying, hey girl, how are you? Or hey, I saw you were just on vacation, how was it? Or hey, I'm not sure if this is something that interests you, but I have this fitness accountability group starting in two weeks. Is that something that would interest you? Simple as that, you know, or hey, I see that you're always into working out and stuff and you're so positive on your page. Have you ever considered doing what I do in coaching? Simple as those words are, they're scary to do. Um, and so you just have to push through those fears. Um, so again, it comes back to what is that long-term vision that you have? And then in your downline as well. And that's why I'm like, if I know what your goals are, I can help you guys be like, you can do this, right? A lot of you guys all first started as customers in one of my challenge groups. And you saw success in that. And you built up the self-belief in that. And then from there you then decided, hey, I'm going to pursue this whole coaching thing, right? So um, figuring out what, um, what your vision is, and then what is your personal mission? And one, I love this. One of the speakers said, 
in one word, if you could describe what your mission is as a coach for your particular business, remember Beachbody is just our tool. We are not Beachbody. In your business, what would be your mission? What is that one word? And then be true to you. Stay in your lane. If you are not like the fittest, buffest, rippest, like bench press, whatever, six packs ab, you don't have to be. I shared that today on my fitness page and I just shared it over to my personal page today. I'm like, here I am working out with hundreds of coaches and you can see in my video, plenty of them in the background are modifying. Some of them are going hardcore. Everybody's at different levels, but we're all doing the workout together. We're all there for the same reason. We all have a lot of the same goals and we all have a lot of different goals and we all have lots of different strengths and weaknesses, etc but we just come together, right? And so you don't have to be everything to everybody. So I love to compare Janelle Summers and Lindsay Matway. Lindsay Matway loves to talk about how fitness is not her favorite thing. It, she's grown to like it more, but that's not her favorite thing. Um, so she has to make herself do her workouts. Whereas like a Janelle Summers, fit, she's like, feels like, I feel like her and I relate because I eat, breathe, live fitness. I just love it, right? Whereas a lot of the people that I coach, it's a lot for them to get through the 21 day fix, a 30 minute workout program. And they feel such accomplishment getting through that. And they should, because that's where they're at. So if that, you don't have to be this crazy fitness person to be a, a beach body coach, because a lot of the people that you're helping are not crazy, super fitness people, right? Um, so stay in your lane. If you're quirky, be quirky. If you've got these crazy other hobbies and interests, share them because I guarantee you, a ton of other people are gonna to relate to you on those specific things, and then as you get to know each other and connect, then you can talk about fitness and help them. Okay, so the number one word that ran through uh, both of them was hustle, um, and so uh, all about how you live, um, and so in passion and in purpose, and live it out loud. You know, I'm like a constant walking billboard with Beachbody stuff. I'm wearing and sharing the clothing all the time. I talk about it. Um, I used to be kind of hesitant to talk about what I did, and now I'm like, whatever. You like it, you don't like it, you don't, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna tell it, like, you know, hey, that's what I do. I'm an online health and fitness coach. Awesome. And then sometimes it starts a conversation, and sometimes it doesn't. And so it's again, it's not just going through your to-do list. It's not just posting to post. It's not just doing the things, but doing them with the right intent and in how you do them. Um, and then going back to the whole, it's not just okay to want to help people. There has to be this underlying real reason why, right? And so one girl talked about, she's the number seven coach in the company last year. She, you thought this would be like the year that she would just live it up. And her family has got some major health issues. And so it's been more turmoil and heartache for her. But the blessing is, She's got this income and she's got this business with flexibility that allows her to travel back and forth to her sick mom and her sister and her brother, etc. cetera, um, because of this business. Um, and so she really honed in on it's got to be all people first. You've got to be inter have integrity, um, authority. What is your definition of a success? It doesn't have to be a six-figure income. It doesn't have to be that you're bringing in $1,000 a week. What is it for you in success? Same thing in your own personal health and fitness. If that is getting five workouts a week out of seven, if that's success for you, that's success for you. If it's not drinking soda five days a week, that's success for people, right? So you got to figure out what your definition of success is. And then striving for a goal is good for you. You got to have something that's kind of motivating you and pushing you. Otherwise, what's the point? And what's going to really make you do any of those things, right? And then to really don't apologize for inviting people. If you believe in the products and you believe in the business and you believe in the community and the family that we are as Beachbody or in that I hope we are as Team Mad, then share that. Don't be afraid to invite people in it. Even if you don't feel like you've had much success financially, who cares? What are the other things that being a coach has brought to you? That's the things that you talk about. That's the things that you share. Okay. So wrapping that up, I know everybody's super excited. They probably have seen um, videos and different other coach posts. If you guys also follow Team Beachbody 411 on Facebook, they also launched information about the new launches. So go we'll check that out as well. But the, at Summit this year, we will launch, which I, this I'm dying for this one now. 
Shift Shop by Chris Downing. I have followed him online before. Um, it's a three wink like strength and agility sports program. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a lot of space. Um, he builds on the workouts each week. So the first week is 25 minutes. The second week is 35 minutes. The third week is 45 minute workouts. Each move is built upon so they get harder and harder, but you're building on the original foundation. So it's not like brand new moves coming at you in week three. Also, um, the, the meal plan starts off with a little bit higher carbs. Week two, that drops the carbs. And week three, it's a lot lower carbs. And each week, your protein is increasing, um, which typically would happen if you ever follow anyone who does like a normal fitness competition and stuff. Usually, that's how it goes for meals. Um, but those of you guys who have the all access, you don't have to buy this. So that's another great selling feature if you're getting – people on your feed saying, Hey, I know you're a coach. Hey, I saw this program is coming out. You can be like, dude, you can get Shakeology. You can get meal plan containers. You can get this whole program and then every other program with the all access, right? Or if you have customers right now, this is another thing to like say, Hey, all right, let's get you going for April and May on a certain workout program because, or even through June, help them build up that strength so that they can then do this program when it launches. So it will launch at Summit. Um, if you have the all access, that means it will show up in your Beachbody On Demand and you don't have to pay for it, which is so cool. Um, so that's that one. I'm super excited about that. Those of you who love uh, Brazilian butt lift, those of you who love size or country heat or hip hop abs, it, this is for you, okay? And if you do have, I love that a lot of the um, the people in the workout videos are not your super fit people. Okay. So this is a great beginner workout. It's a lot of fun. The music is like eighties and nineties, which is probably the only thing that would interest me in this because you guys just know I, I'm not a fan of size or, or country heat. Um, Sunil can tell you the face that I had to wear for like 10 minutes yesterday trying to do size. And we only did it for 10 minutes and it was like the worst 10 minutes of my life. Um, Anyway, it's launching May 16th. Um, again, it will be in your um, Beachbody On Demand if you have all access. I'm almost positive on that. Um, and it's dance-inspired cardio. I think he's hilarious. I think I've only made it through one of his actual Brazil butt lift workouts, maybe two of them. Um, he's not everyone's cup of tea. If he is yours, you'll probably find him hilarious. Um, Anyway, this is a great one for a lot of, especially your customers. For me, I get a lot of people who are like, I love your workouts, but I could never do them. Insanity and burpees and push-ups and lifting weights does not interest a lot of people. This would interest them. So this is something that I can offer to them just because I'm not doing it doesn't mean that I don't have something that I can give to people, right? And then... Um, I'm super excited to try these. So we do have two new Shakeology flavors. We have vegan vanilla, vegan cafe latte. They are going to launch, I assume tomorrow, right? I think tomorrow is the 10th. So in the USA, see Canada has different um, regulations. So they legit just got, I think, cafe latte over there. Like just got a cafe latte. So this is probably going to take a long time to get over to Canada. But in the US, um, it is launching. I am hoping that they're going to add this to that Shakeology sampler box. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that they're going to have them on the success trip in like two weeks so I can try them. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm not a fan of the vegan tropical. I think it's super chalky. And the vegan chocolate is not that sweet. So I don't like it as much as I do the regular chocolate. Um, and I'm not a crazy fan for our vanilla. So I'm hoping that these two are pretty good. So I'll be interested to try them. And so how they formulated it and what they've added with Shakeology um, is the addition of matcha, which if you've heard of a lot of people drink matcha chi or maca or matcha, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, uh, tea. It's a form of green tea. Um, so there's all the health benefits from that. And then chaga, I hear about this a lot because um, I follow a bunch of people online who do other supplements and stuff. Chaga is another highly... Um, awesome nutrient. And so it's basically from different mushrooms and stuff. And so those are the two new additions to Shakeology and how they helped at least create these two flavors. Um, I'm not sure if they're 
adding it to the original Shakeology formula or not, but I know they are constantly changing the Shakeology formulas. Um, okay, and so hopefully they usually post it by tomorrow. If there's a link, I will post it in Team Mad. If not, they will post the corporate video that they always show at Super Saturday or Super Friday or Super Sunday, wherever yours is located. They will post it in your coach online office, and I guarantee you it'll be up probably by tomorrow or Tuesday at the latest. So check your coach breaking news section. That video will be there. I really want you guys to listen to the last coach on that video. She's a brand new coach. She's only been a coach for a year, but she's had success from day one. And these are some of her tips that she shared with everybody else. So that was when she wakes up first thing in the morning, she's got kids, she's got to get them off to school. She legit sends out 20 invites to her group every single day. And if people start to respond back, she doesn't distract herself and go back and answer the people who just responded to her. She finishes 20 invites. Then she's like, I get my kids breakfast, I get them dressed, I get them off to school. And then when I come back, I do my workout and then it's my time back into my business. She's like, then I respond to whoever messaged me back. That's when I send out my friend requests. That's when people accept my friend requests. I go to their pictures and I like five of their most recent photos, I leave two comments, and then I send them an invite, or I send them a message, like, hey girl, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, in those that I've invited, if some respond, some don't respond, some say not right now, she said, either way, I'm planting the seed, and I guarantee you, they're gonna come over and check out my page. So this is why I'm telling you guys to constantly make sure what you're posting on your page is, like, could somebody tell within your last eight posts that you're a coach? Could somebody tell in the last eight posts, posts that you work out, that you're living a healthier lifestyle, that you're here to help people? Could they tell that? Could they tell any of your hobbies or your interests or something about you? Um, because that's what it's gonna do when people accept your friend request or when you send a friend request, they're gonna go to your page. Um, and when you send them a message, they're gonna then go to your page. They wanna check you out. Be like, who is this person? So make sure that you have that. Um, life is going to happen, she said, so I'm gonna make it count anyway. And she was in a lot of debt and she needed to get out of it. And she realized like staying in her job, nothing was going to change or becoming a coach. Life is going to continue to happen, but this is the only thing that was going to make some kind of a change. And it clearly has for her. And then be consistently consistent every single day, doing the vital behaviors, doing that to do checklist as easy as it is to do. It's super easy not to do print off your business activity tracker and follow those simple steps every single day. Um, and then again, your, this video is in your um, coach online office, so you can watch that. So I want to make sure I can see you guys all. All right, stop share, boom. All right, 